the way we have this, the way we have this design, there should be no fossil fuels needed for the space heating in this house. We've got effectively 15 inches of, 16 inches of foam, no, 15 and a quarter inches of foam uh, between here and the slab. And in the center, it's 12 inches of foam. And so that's going to, that's going to try to keep the heat loss to the ground uh, to a minimum. Well, if I do my modeling right, the, the peak heating load should be under 10,000 BTUs per hour. Compare that to an average house in Fairbanks, it's going to be easily over 40,000 BTUs per hour. What makes this house so efficient? Uh, well, number one is the building envelope. It's uh, start with the base. We've got on uh, the perimeter, we've got 15 inches of EPS foam protecting the edge of the slab, the poured slab or thickened slab from the ground. And then underneath the center of the slab, there's about 12 inches of foam all the way around. There's a lot of foam. But above grade, it's, uh, it's all blown cellulose. It's the double wall, the arctic wall. Um, it's not really a double wall, the inner wall is the structural wall, the outer wall is just a balloon frame wall that's meant to hold the insulation against the house. So that 19 and a half inches totals up to a 24 inch thick exterior wall. So it's a nice thick wall, much more thick than conventional walls, but that's the ticket mm -hmm. for uh, the building envelope. Of course it's also going to be tight, we're going to tape all the seams. <laughs> the payback for the extra insulation in the ground, uh, subfloor, um, and also the exterior, you know, the cellulose. That payback should be about six years. And that's on today's, based on today's oil prices. If we were, if this house were heated with a standard oil heater, you would, it would pay for itself in about six years. Of course, if the prices go up, then that payback period gets a little shorter. That's nothing. That's nothing. The life of a house should be 50 years plus design should be 50 years plus mm -hmm. and as far as we're concerned this house should last over 100 years without any issues you know and this column is a thickened slab with extra rebar underneath the masonry heater is a thickened slab with extra rebar um, same thing under that that's actually a column two we've got that and of course it's a thickened slab underneath the whole perimeter where the low bearing walls are and can you tell me a little bit about the heating and mechanical systems and what makes that unique? <laughs> sure, sure. There's there's a 2,500-gallon uh, tank buried beneath the slab, and that tank's going to be filled with water that coll solar collectors on the exterior of the house will heat during the, the summertime when there's, or summer and fall and spring months when there's lots of sun. It'll heat that tank up to temperature, and then we'll, we'll, we'll sip off, sip the heat from that during the wintertime to heat our radiant flooring. And that should get us, if the calculations are right, should get us into mid-December before we need to supplement that heat. We're gonna supplement that heat by having a masonry wood heater that with a coil in the firebox so that every time you start a fire, it's gonna heat the upper layer of the thermal storage. The key to the whole thermal storage, of course, is the stratification of the tank. That, that means there's, it could be 80 degrees at the bottom and 120 degrees at the top. We don't have to have 120 degrees all the way through. Um, that takes a lot of energy to do that. And this gives us a way to, by stratifying, you maximize the solar collection efficiency and you minimize the amount you really have to heat in the wintertime with your wood. Mm -hmm. So that should be about six weeks that we, six weeks or three quarters of a quart of wood should take care of all the heating needs in our house. Dude, the truck comes up and starts laying on the horn. <laughs> it's really exciting. This is a, a whole nother world. <laughs> what are some of the challenges of building this way that maybe you didn't encounter in conventional construction? Or... Um, mainly, mostly it's, it's with, the, with the two walls. It's, it's just wrapping your head around it um, and like planning ahead and you know making sure you don't put something in that you shouldn't for the next thing needs to go in. Um, it's it's sort, sort of counterintuitive for me um, having built conventionally up to this point. Mm -hmm. Does it change your perspective at all about, you know, building in the future or the type of house that oh, you totally. would design? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll never build a normal house again. <laughs> um, well, definitely the wall system is, once you get the hang of it, it's, um, I don't feel like it would be that much work than an, 
more work than a, a normal one. Um, I mean, obviously, you have a whole second wall to build, but um, it's it's still within within reason for the benefit of it. It's it's kind of a no-brainer.